Guys, there's enough sticks to go around. You can have one each. Yesterday, they were filming a movie here, which they do quite a lot around here. This is often used as a movie set, but just 24 hours ago, right here behind me, were a whole section of trees that they must have planted just for making that movie set and then they sprayed them all white to make a winter wonderland type scene. 24 hours later it's all gone. The magical world of cinema. By the way I may have said this before but doesn't that remind you of a certain awesome Belgian racetrack? <laughs> So going back to the film set, the thing about movies is that you can just, you can make stuff happen in an instant, can't you? Just like that, magic. It's amazing. In real life, of course, it doesn't quite work like that. In the movies, I could, I mean, I could get rid of this hair. I could go back to having short hair, just like. And if I want to go back to how it used to be, well, I can just do that again. <laughs> um, you know, in real life, that's not how it works. In real life, you have to figure things out. You have to go through, work out problems. You have to work through things, fail, and then find the solutions out of those failures. Try again. That's how life works. If you want to get success, you have to really put in the effort. Actually, I think it does look better short, doesn't it? Yeah, let's go back to that. Yeah, that's definitely better. And that's why I guess I find it so frustrating when people try to criticise or to devalue the achievements of people in life, whether it's sportsmen, whether it's movie stars, musicians, whatever it might be, people in business. Most of these people have done that, have achieved that success through sheer hard work and brilliance. And let's bring it back to Formula One because the reason that I was frustrated most recently was, of course, Lewis Hamilton has had the incredible achievement of matching the win record of the great Michael Schumacher. And that's not a coincidence. Lewis Hamilton hasn't achieved that number of wins by luck. He hasn't had some massive advantage that other people haven't had. And I've had so many people say to me, well, he's got the best car, of course he's going to win all these races, of course he's going to win all these championships. And there are a couple of things to say about that. First of all, he has got the best car, but he's earned the right to be driving the best car on the grid. Every other driver in Formula One is aiming to try and get themselves into a top car. And they do that by trying to have some success in the cars that they're in right now. When Lewis Hamilton went to Mercedes, they weren't the best team on the grid. In fact, I used to work with Lewis at McLaren, one of the greatest teams at that time, and yet I and all of my teammates, along with everyone else in Formula One at the time, were very surprised at the decision Lewis had made to jump from McLaren into an, a team at Mercedes that were kind of average at best. And so that decision was taking on board a challenge for Lewis, a challenge that he took on himself and along with some amazing people at that team, it's Lewis and the team together that have developed the car into the brilliance that it is today. So the advantage that Lewis has over the rest of the field right now is one that he and the people around him have built through hard work, through never giving up, through finding absolute brilliance in every single area of what they do, through taking the the awesomeness that is Formula One and that is a Formula One team and Formula One engineers and maximising it to a, a whole new level. They're setting a benchmark that everyone else is trying to achieve. They haven't had any advantage that no one else was able to have. They had the same parameters to work within, the same regulations, the same rules. They brought in some brilliant people but they also created some brilliant people from within the organisation. Lewis was part of that process too. So you can't criticise or try and devalue somebody's achievements when they've earned it through hard work, determination and brilliance. The point is, there is no movie magic in Formula One. You know, there's rarely ever a quick fix for something. You can't make a slow car fast overnight. Rarely ever is that possible. It's very difficult to make an unreliable car reliable, just like that. 
you know, these things take time, they take effort, they take a process to go through to achieve the results you want to achieve. And that's just the way it is. There is no way of shortcutting that. I mean, I really wish there was because, do you remember this? The uh, drone, which I sunk into the river some time ago. You may remember that. Uh, well, rather than just leave it sat there on a bench, festering away, doing nothing, I thought, how hard can that be to fix? So I've started taking it apart. And now I'm up to my eyeballs in screws no bigger than the head of a pin and not really any idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Not working anymore. <laughs> One of the other things I was hoping to try and achieve today was to film this week's Tales from the Treehouse. But as you can see out there, it is absolutely lashing it down. And because the treehouse is covered in corrugated metal, it makes a racket. So that's on hold. But given that it's Wednesday, and if you saw my video the other day, about my exercise regime these days, you'll know that on a Wednesday, whatever the weather, I've got to get out there running. How else am I going to get fit? That's better. Instagram message this morning from a young lad, 13 year old Oliver, who messaged me to say that, hey Elvis, I'm 13, but I already know exactly what I want to do for a living, and that is to become the front jack man in a Formula One pit stop crew. He said, I'm 100% committed and dedicated to it. I'm taking GCSE engineering, which by the way, what an amazing subject to be able to take in uh, GCSE level. Wasn't around when I was in, uh, in school, I'd have loved that. Um, but he said, look, I'm taking that. I've already reached out to some team to find ways to get myself to a racetrack, even just to experience it. He said, I absolutely love Formula One. I cannot wait to get there. Nothing's going to stop me. And you know what? That message brought a, a warm feeling to my heart because that's exactly how I felt when I was about, I don't know, 15 years old, when I made that decision to become a Formula One mechanic. And in exactly the same way, I was not going to let anything get in my way. I was 100% committed and dedicated, and ultimately, that's what got me there. And the reason that I took so much time to respond to, to Ollie, to Oliver, and write back to him with some advice, sent him a link to a video that I made some time ago, one of the really early videos on my channel to say how to become a Formula One mechanic. And I offered to advise him all the way through, to stay in touch, to sort of mentor him to some extent, if there's any way that I can help in that way because I thought it was such a great little touch, a nice little touching message. And it goes completely against so many of the messages that I get on Instagram, right here on YouTube, the emails I receive from people going, hey Elvis, uh, help a brother out, I really want to get to Formula One. Can you hook me up with a team manager at McLaren? Can you uh, drop my CV onto his desk? Or can you give me the phone number of Toto Wolf or whatever it is? These people looking for shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. Believe me, I wish there were, because sometimes the last thing I feel like doing is running around the lake every one Monday, Wednesday and Friday. But if I want to achieve, if I want to benefit from what comes from that, I've got to put the effort in, I've got to put the work in. I will help anybody out who comes to me a bit like Oliver did for help. I'll give advice, I will help guide people in the right direction all day long. I love doing it, I enjoy doing it because I never had that opportunity when I was a kid, so if I can help somebody, then it's great. What I won't do very often is do the work for people who can't be bothered to do a quick Google and find out the team manager's name at a certain organisation. Those are the really easy bits to do. Those are the, the bare minimum things you should be doing. Now, what I took from Oliver's email was that you know, he's in this, properly in this and dedicated. He knows what he wants, which is amazing at such an early age. And I almost, without even knowing the kid, feel like he will get there because his attitude appears to be in exactly the right place. 
So be a little bit more like Oliver. And Ollie, the very best of luck, mate. As I said in the email, in the message, stay in touch. And just maybe at some point in the future, I'll see you in a pit lane and maybe you will be part of the next generation of one of these Formula One teams that is thoroughly, deservedly going out and smashing all of the records that are currently being set that we think might never be broken today. And if you do that, it'll be because of the decisions you're making today. Just like Lewis Hamilton is breaking records because of the dedication and the effort and the commitment that he put in and his family put in when he was probably your age, Oliver. So good luck. I have no doubt that you will make it and I cannot wait to see you achieve your dreams. And I guess that goes for everybody. Enjoy yourselves, be a little bit more like Oliver and I'll see you soon. Have a good day, folks.